Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Yes, yes, Um, after a long, long break, sabbatical, whatever you want to call it, I am back. You are back listening to the 8 More Than 92 podcast, where it's known to always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison, and I thank you, thank you for your patience, but the boy is back again. I hope everybody has been well while I've been away, but I mean, shoot, we can get right to it. Um back 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 glad to be back glad to have taken the time to just you know just make sure i came back correctly um i'll go ahead and knock you know some of i guess you know the eerie easily questions you know where it been at i just kind of felt like you know when you're in this podcasting space when you are doing this stuff you need to make sure that your head is in you need to make sure your head is in the game and you're able to give your energy to this completely. This shouldn't feel like an extra job. This shouldn't feel like you are doing something that is strenuous or tiring or a hassle. You shouldn't feel overwhelmed by doing this podcast in space. This should feel like a luxury. When I first started this, when I first was doing this, this was a release for me. This was therapy. This was decompressing. I told everybody this should be a decompression zone. And for a while, this started to become a task. I started to not enjoy myself coming onto the pod. I had, you know, everybody has life. And this used to be an escape for when life was really going on. And after a while, it didn't seem like it was any type of escape. And so, you know, even when I wasn't on episodes, you know, it still wasn't um, an escape, you know, because I was still having to do a certain type of certain aspects of it. But you know, I just felt like even when I came on the show, <clears throat> you know, if anybody's been on long enough, it just wasn't really myself. And so, you know, I just kind of like took a break from everything. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody's noticed there's no pages or anything of me really on social media at all. And that wasn't any particular reason just for just kind of wanting a break. And that's about as deep as I'm going to get into it. Um, I just felt like if I couldn't come on here and give everybody the best representation of myself, then I wasn't going to be on here. And I just felt like until I could come on here and give everybody the authentic, authentic Harrison that y'all are known to love, then I wasn't going to be on here. And that's what I wanted to make sure I get, uh, did. So I made sure I kind of removed myself from it. And then I will say, you know, a lot of things were kind of factoring. Like, you know, once you take like a break for that long, you kind of get nervous and you see other people's spaces, you know, a lot of celebrities and stuff were kind of coming in to this podcasting space and it kind of made you nervous. Like, why am I even coming back? You got the Stephen A's, you got the Jeff T's, you got the Gilbert arenas, you got all these other people that are kind of pushing the lower market podcasters out the way you had the poor minds. You had, <clears throat> you had the, um, 85 South. You had, you had, um, uh, Uncle, uh, the nightcap, you just had so many podcasts club. Shay Shay was blowing up and it was just kind of like, where do you fit in? And then on top of that, you had the viral podcasts that were going and it just seemed like, what was the purpose of doing that? And on top of that, you had the streamers, the streamers are taking over. And it was just kind of like, you know, when I started this, it was, I moved very quickly, but I did this for the hobby and I wasn't doing this like to, to be famous. But I think, you know, genuinely, everybody who does this, you don't want to you want you want people to see your craft. You want to see the hard work that you put in. You know, I spent a long time teaching myself how to edit videos and audio and all this type of stuff. And you at least want your stuff to be heard. And then, you know, you see all these podcasts and stuff. All these other podcasts come out with loads more of people in way better positions to pilot themselves to a higher ceiling than you are just because of their fan base, whatever it is. And it seemed like every show had a podcast. Oh man, the BMF podcast, these will come with a bigger fan base, uh, Draymond green podcast. And you just kind of get discouraged because who's going to listen to my stuff. And not only was I not in a good headspace, I wasn't happy. You know, it was just another reason not to record. So just after a while of not, um, using 
that is ex- using that as an excuse to not want to record. It was just another reason to kind of be in a rut. And I do appreciate all the people that reached out because a lot of people use Instagram. And a lot of people use all these apps to think that you have a relationship with somebody. And I purposely never came back to, and I had shut down my Instagram page well before I even stopped recording, but I purposely shut down my Instagram page uh, on purpose because I was just kind of tired of like the games that Instagram brought up. And I appreciate these individuals, uh, Germ, uh, Webb, Dolly, Rodis, JR, Irv Weeks, <clears throat> Um, Tino Trim. Um, I want to say uh, that to nail anybody from the podcast and space that actually had my number. Those people that had my number, you know that um that were in the podcasting game. I appreciate y'all because it was you know if you didn't have my number, then I obviously didn't fuck with you like that. You know to a certain extent. Um, and they actually reached out and see if I was okay. That really meant a lot. I, I really took those relationships for what they were. It was bigger than just recording. And to the people, you know, that was just wondering, they didn't ask me about coming back at all. They just asked me if I was cool. And the people just wondering, you know, was it about an episode? Obviously, if, it, if I want to put out an episode, I would just put out an episode. So, you know, um, it showed like a lot that, you know, some people can't get out the space that it is for the, you know, the internet, for the likes and stuff like that. And then some people that, you know, this wasn't what it was to me. This was like, I put my blood, sweat and tears to this. You know what I'm saying? The merchandise wasn't just... Some, none of this was to get rich quick. This was for me to express myself. And, you know, ironically, I dropped this, you know, I'm recording this on my birthday. So happy birthday to me. I'm dropping this on my birthday. Happy birthday to me. And I just felt like, you know, I was back in good spirits. I was back happy. I was back excited to wake up again. I was back to go out and, you know, have a spirit and have my personality again. And I was back excited to be creative again. So that was kind of an urge to get back. And, you know, shout out to Rodis um particularly for you know telling me to take it slow you know i don't have to go back to like the routes of feeling overwhelmed by like running so many social sites by myself i don't have to do all that just hit record that's all i want to do now i just wanted to get back out here and just start doing something now when i want to do before before i was running the page before i was doing any of that i was just recording audio i was just making videos so that's what i'm gonna do right now <clears throat> i'm gonna keep it simple and i'm gonna get back to the basics and i'm gonna just do me so you know, that's what we're doing right now. So to kick it off, our highest condolence to Akira Toyama of Dragon Ball Z. Yes, I want to take this time to make sure we give our deepest condolence to somebody that shaped my generation for years to come. Um, if anybody doesn't know, he created Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z to anybody who grew up in the 90s, whether it's between 87 and 90. And then I want to say maybe 95, if not longer. He created our boys in the hood, our Tupac, our, you know, our legendary street legends this was what every boy wanted to be dragon ball z was like one of those iconic shows you know it was just for our generation i mean and it wasn't just for like american kids you know black kids it was for worldwide like um you know the older you get you see a lot of stuff kind of happen to you and you just kind of figure out you know you kind of realize the impact of stuff that it, you kind of see what kind of shaped you as a person and dragon ball z kind of fell into that realm now you know the first time i kind of realized things were or life was kind of real i mean you all you, let me just kind of phrase that like you know life is real you know stuff isn't a game but it's kind of like maybe you should kind of appreciate stuff more because you know every day isn't promise and i want to say it kind of hit me that you know every day isn't promised to me when Mac Miller died. And that was because I was a big Mac Miller fan and Mac Miller was my age. And, you know, somebody around that time at my age that died for something so simple, you know, when I was at college for, um, that died for what everybody around me was doing. Like it was just kind of hit home. Like, you know, I listened to Mac and that was that new wave of music. Like when, you know, where you were kind of fitting into your style and, they were all doing what you were doing. It was like, dang, that really kind of sucked. Were you kind of connected before fame with what it was now? And then, you know, after that, it was Nipsey. But like, this is up there in my mind because I feel like it touches the earth and it affects everybody is, you know, when Kobe died. 
And I, in my mind, I feel like when Kobe died, you know, the world stopped. And if anybody remembers when Kobe died, like, you know, I feel like everybody just paused what they were doing and just like had a moment of like silence for Kobe. You know, I'm like, it's just, I just remember exactly what happened. I was sitting on the floor doing homework and I was texting banks. And I was like, bro, Kobe just died. And he was like, what? And it seemed like nobody was doing anything like the GameStop. And I literally feel like the world just paused when Kobe died. And like, even now to this day, Kobe doesn't feel like he's dead Um, to me. I just feel like he's still there. I just feel like he's not just all his videos. just seem like he just shot him yesterday. And so for this, I mean, you can't tell me one time that, you know, ain't nobody put their hands up like this and, you know, said a uh, spirit bomb or, you know, put your hands together at one point and put all your strength into it and say, Kamehameha. And you lying. If you are in your mid thirties, early thirties and ain't try to scream the highest of your lungs and sit there and try to go super saiyan you lying like hell okay everybody's drawings when you was in like middle school was trying to draw a super saiyan with the chin and all that hell i even got like a, a drawer right a dresser right here of dragon ball z characters i ain't gonna pull them down because i don't want to mess it up but i mean like it was impactful like that was like our staple like that was every that was our initial integration in the anime so you know you felt like you was something like you felt like you was cool you felt like you traveled by watching dragon ball z and then goku was like that nigga you know everybody wanted to be goku goku ain't well, goku lost goku died so it ain't like um you know nobody wanted to be krillin now you know i feel like the closest to being called actually nobody wanted to be yamcha you know because yamcha lost his woman and you know Yamcha died to uh, Jelly Bean, so if you got called a Yamcha, you know you was closest to a bitch. But the second bitch was Krillin, you know, because Krillin was always on somebody nutsack. If you want to know what Krillin is, to anybody, you know, um, I would think Krillin is the equivalent of if you suck at a sport and you with your homeboys and you know that the only reason you got picked up is because you was with your homeboys. But if you was at the court by yourself that day, you know you're not getting picked up. That's probably the equivalent of what Krillin is, you know? Because if Goku ain't there, Krillin is dead. As you can see, any time that Goku has not been around, Krillin has died or been severely injured to the point where Krillin was about to die. So, AKA, Krillin is not getting picked up for open court or anything. Krillin, is the type of person that will call downs and you would lie and say, no, I had down before you. And he would just let you take the down. You wouldn't Krillin's the type of person that if you said, Hey, um, I need five. You'd be like, Oh, I'm waiting for the next game. That's how that's, that's it, the equivalent of somebody saying you Krillin, you know, you might as well like Krillin was the shortest one in his relationship. Krillin was so ass that he couldn't get a real woman. He had to go get an Android. He was the first one to date a like to go get like one of those like AI pocket pussies. You know what I'm saying? So that's Krillin. That's how sad it is. At least Yamcha had Boma. He had some ass before she went and got an alien with Vegeta. But Krillin, no, no. I don't know how this kid thing came up. I'm not about to go and all that. We not about to go that. But what I'm saying to you is, Dragon Ball Z shaped all of us. Like I said, is it was our childhood. It was our it was our identity. It was who we were. And to lose the creator that, you know, act, you just want to say thank you. You you felt um, he told our stories of, you know, you every, even bullies, like, could talk about Dragon Ball Z. It was, it was how you bonded. So, you know, losing the creator that you really realize and put in perspective how much of an impact for somebody you never met was in your life so i want to say thank you to akira toriyama for putting such an impact in my life i want to say thank you for shaping my childhood to be what i am today i'm in my 30s i'm not gonna say my age but i probably already said so fuck it 34 and i'm happy to be the geeky person that you know i can't fight niggas if y'all want to think that you could try me but anyways the geeky person i am today that is proud to be uh was wanted to be a super saiyan all his life um i don't like that you didn't draw any black super saiyans i guess our uh, a gold afro was too much i don't know but it is what it is but i want to take this time to give our highest condolences to um akira toriyama 
he died of a brain aneurysm uh 68 years old but the impact that you feel put will be life um for life law everlasting and you will your impact will not be forgotten by anybody so um anybody that hears this under the age of niggas that listen to dragon ball z don't say shit because we will square the fuck up like ain't shit changed like you will get your ass beat so um my condolences again anybody else um you know if you got like a dragon ball z story or whatever that you reminded just drop it in the comments all right so let's move right along so the next thing we got to wrap with today we got jalen green and drea michaels i don't know if i should congratulate this man or slap him upside the goddamn head for i mean being a fool of a fool i mean i really don't know how to feel about all this um I, I I mean, well, I know how to feel from it from the standpoint of I need that same energy to be kept for women for what Dre is doing that it is for what because the word one word needs to be retired from people is grooming because grooming seems to only apply to men. But um, I just need that same energy I have for R. Kelly and Robert De Niro and Marcus Houston, especially. I need that to be applied to Dre and Bernice Burgos. And anybody else, oh, uh, Brittany Renner, anybody else who's going out here doing the same thing that y'all are crucifying men for, for doing the same. I mean, R. Kelly had a whole document and y'all acting like y'all don't step in the name of love no more in public. But um, I just, you know, my thoughts on it is Drea fine. OK, um, I forgave her for leaving Nico in the house eating oodles and noodles a long, long time ago. OK. I will not lie to you and sit there and say that I was not hypnotized by Mint Swim. And a part of me is only upset because I'm not talking about the pregnancy part. I'm just saying I don't blame you, Jalen, for, you know, going after Dread because it is nothing wrong with her at all. You got, look, if Pam Greer was here right now, okay, I would be black spoilatation that ass up in a heartbeat you ain't got to tell me you ain't got to call okay it's okay Jalen. you ain't got to say nothing i understand it okay shooters gonna shoot and my nigga you as a professional basketball player for a reason you was pulling up from 30. now where you fucked up at is obviously you didn't go out there with your shooting sleeve on aka you didn't go out there with a condom this is a part that is a weird part to me dre you pushing 40. 40 40 40. Why you want to be a parent at 40, I don't understand other than the part of the bag. And she sat down and said these comments recently. And, you know, let's get her comment take on it. And this is the part where I feel bad for Jalen that because, you know, I feel like this part, you know, he looks like a sucker for because this is when you need to wrap it up. Person you're dating, you you see like a future with them. I think the question you were asking me is if I wanted more kids. And I feel like I want more kids. And yeah. I feel like... At mm -hmm. this point in my life, right? Yeah. The relationship is is amazing to have, right? But that's not what I'm basing having a kid on because right. I'm very non traditional. Yeah. I feel like you can co parent without being in a relationship. Maybe just two people say, Hey, you want a kid? I want a kid. Let's just have a kid and like let's just Really? See. So you would you I'm would very do like that? free spirit. I'm very open and just Okay. So um if he knew this and she knew this I mean, she knew this and he knew this and they was going into it and they had a kid. I mean, you know, they both grown. I mean, he's sticking to moving. You know, you got to you have to um, respect two grown people's decision. I'm not going to sit there and say at 22 years old, he should know everything that he needs to know. I think that's a little bit irresponsible. I think if he was to sit there and tell me that he loves this girl and she's the one for him, I would look at him and say, man, sit your dumb ass down. Easy as that. You know what I'm saying? And if he sat there and she sat there and said that he was the love of her life, I would look at her and say, Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. But I will say this. This is where I feel like this is where if I was a judge or if I was a legislator, this is how you like stop all this scheme and stuff. Because I feel like let's just be realistic. I mean, there's a child into it. And this is how you kind of stop all this scheming and gold digging or whatever you want to call it. 
you seen in the comments she said she just wants a kid she doesn't necessarily need to be with anybody okay that's fine you just want to you know frolic uh frolic around and do all that and you want to have a kid cool when you have the baby you provide basically it's almost like a house or a bill like y'all split the bill like y'all going dutch he don't provide nothing except when the baby is with him and when the baby is with you you provide for the baby your portion like there's no child support needed because you just wanted the baby so since you didn't want the baby with him because of his um financial security you just wanted a baby and you didn't need to be in a relationship then you especially because dre is not poor you should be able to financially support it and i feel like that's for everybody i think it's the same with anthony edwards i think that it needs to be a stance where we are realistic with ourselves like yes the guys need to be responsible you need to be smart what you're doing also like ladies let's be realistic with ourselves it is it's the same way that if you're a rapper or a millionaire and you cheat on your spouse they're going to take you back versus if you're broke i mean broke niggas get taken back as well but if you get cheated on uh, by a broke nigga you're probably going to be less you know lenient to take them back than you would um somebody who is making a lot of money and that's because the financial security so once we are not bringing in a life in this situation let's see how frivolous you are with producing children so once you have to front the bill and that bill, like, let's see, some people are paying like $20,000 a month. Let's see if, if that $20,000 or 10,000, whatever you think is justifiable for a child when you take him to court, let's see if you pay that. Are you as irresponsible enough to give your body up to people as he's irresponsible enough to sit there and lay without having a condom? And I think that's how you kind of weed out some of this bullshit that's going on. And then let's just call it what it is because i mean jalen green is going to be a hundred million dollar athlete let's you didn't you didn't lay down with a bum you didn't lay down with um tyrone from checking the cash you didn't lay down with even a six-figure nigga like you know somebody's making 80 hundred thousand dollars a year you didn't lay down with him you knew what you were doing so i mean you 39 years old i think her oldest son if i'm not mistaken nico they the same age so if we being realistic realistic um what do y'all talk about this nigga like i think it's videos of him doing suspect stuff and you um were around during 106 in park he didn't even really watch toonami which i didn't even sit there and say during the dragon ball z phase but i mean you know, sometimes it's the fuck we feel all by yourself. You say that to him. He can't even name you all the characters in Moesha. He can't, he don't know uh, who Dorian really is. He don't even know what kind of car dealership Frank was at. You feel what I'm saying? What happened to Andell? Exactly. What was, uh, what was um, Merlin Santana's name on Moesha? what was romeo's best friend on steve harvey he don't know none of this shit you know why because his ass wasn't fucking born exactly he don't even know the name of pop's restaurant on wayans brothers and it should be fucking obvious all i'm saying is what y'all talking about but i bet you, you can tell you everybody on cost and not uh streaming and your ass can't either you probably don't even know how to set up a streaming site so i mean if we being realistic the paycheck and dick is what you was after and the lips and hips is what he was after and you know i candy he attractive male you a uh, fine ass female i mean it just works out for both parties but let's just call a spade a spade let's not drag it on more than what it is and let's have that same energy and do with her like y'all did to marcus houston that's all i care about i mean if she get the same in and i feel like drea is not the best one for this because i feel like People already don't know like Drea. It need to be somebody like, hmm, Taylor Swift. Be somebody that y'all just you ain't got no choice but not to defend. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 be somebody that you you just like or something like that. Be Tiana Taylor. Let it be Tiana Taylor. Somebody that y'all like to defend at every cost. Of what it is? I would say Nicki Minaj, but she like she kind of spiraling spiraling herself. So it don't need to be her. Be somebody that you just have no. Be Issa, the character, not the actual person. Because we all know what I stood for with Issa. Because I'm watching Insecure right now. I'm rewatching it. 
And as we're watching it, I'm letting it be known why Issa wasn't shit. And I want y'all to pr- verify with me. Issa wasn't shit. She shouldn't have been shit. Daniel uh, gave her what she deserved. And Lauren should have pissed on the character Issa. And in my opinion, he was too generous for taking her back. I would have left her ass sitting outside and had the baby kick her every time she walked in the house. But that's just me. Be- we're diverting from the subject. All I'm saying is, let it be somebody that you can um, give that same energy to that you would give to R. Kelly or that you would give to Marcus Houston or that you would give to Robert Downey Jr. or you would give to anybody that you keep using this grooming term to. Give it to them because Bernice Burgo ain't getting it for... I mean, dudes ain't going to care regardless because we love older women, but I'm just saying do it, give it to that same predatory... That y'all saying we need to protect these women for give it to these boys that ain't getting it for Jalen Browns for um AE uh who's dating Cher. Give it to um what's his name? Who did I say earlier? Whoever I said earlier, give it to them. Uh because like I said, that energy is not the same. I mean, hell, anytime somebody is in a domestic situation, y'all always swing back and bring Chris Brown into it, and he ain't got nothing to do with it. And which segues us to our last topic of the day. Um, The major pivot for anybody that I'll say has had a amazing turn of events. Um, Robert Downey Jr. won his first Oscar yesterday for, I want to say it was for Oppenheimer. So that's the only thing that he was up for. I remember him being a movie for. But if anybody remembers well, Robert Downey Jr. um, had a amazing career in the 90s. I do not remember the movie that he was projected to be doing good in, but he also had a stint to where in the 1990s, I can't remember. Let me see. The movie was Chaplin. I remember it. But uh, yeah, he started off in Chaplin, 1992. And then by 1999, he was getting arrested for drug use and he was going to jail. And then in 2008, you know, he was a high risk actor. He was his career was nothing. Basically, I think he when he signed on for Iron Man, he was basically a uh, cautionary actor. You know, they took a risk on him and he was making 400. I want to say he made four hundred and seventy five thousand for Iron Man in 2008. And between Iron Man and Tropic Thunder, he basically revolutionized himself and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And now he's making, I want to say, close to maybe $20 million a film, if that. But I say all that to say, you know, Iron Man had a legendary pivot. And, well, Robert Downey Jr. had a legendary pivot to the point to where you don't even say, he's one of those type of people where you call Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man, like he's transcended to where, his name is synonymous with Iron Man. Like he played that role perfect. But I mean, it's just a testament to second chances. And as great as that is, you know, we had what happened to Jonathan Majors. And unfortunately, black people don't get that pivot. And you can do something so small. At this point, it seemed like you can do something in kindergarten. And you're going to have to hold that burden until you basically die. And to see what Robert Downey Jr. was doing as a druggie, as a uh, um, uh, delinquent, all that, and to be a Oscar winner, somebody who's renowned it as a, a heralded actor, and you see that to even people like Josh Brolin. Um, it's so many actors that went through domestic violence in so many situations that get swept under the rug. And then you have somebody like, like I said earlier, Chris Brown, anybody that's in a domestic situation, Chris Brown name get thrown into it. Chris Brown is going through something that happened when Chris Brown was 19 years old to the point that you could clearly see what it's turned Chris Brown into today. I'm not sitting there saying that what he is now is it wouldn't have happened because of him being a celebrity, but I honestly feel that some of the stuff that he goes through is a direct reflection of him having to go through the turmoils of being labeled a domestic abuser. And it seems like nobody will ever let him forget it. And it seems like nobody will let him forget it, even when it has nothing to do with him. It seems like when somebody else does something, they seem to bring him in the situation and then they get upset with him for not wanting to 
for wanting to move on as if he's not allowed a second chance as if everybody else is perfect and nobody doesn't make some mistake and that's just kind of the generation we're in now which is kind of annoying and it, it gets to the point to where you just kind of don't even respect people's barometer for judgment because who who the fuck are you you know you haven't done anything you've been so perfect if everybody was so perfect in life then there would be no there would be nobody in jail um everybody's doing so well but everybody's on the computer all the time everybody's working at mcdonald's everybody's working at you know these bottom end jobs unhappy and there's nothing wrong with the jobs you're just unhappy at them. that's not where you want to be at because you're looking at other people's lives or you're telling people that they need to go get a cdl or they need to go get a ppp loan and tell everybody how to make all these quick financial moves and you don't have it so you know i just feel that and jonathan major is another one he was prime position to take over the acting world and he didn't get found guilty for the major uh, assault he got found guilty for accidental assault and marvel was going to move on from him regardless so that's just unfortunate you know and i'm hoping that we get to a point to where we're not just castigated out to the side and we get a chance to actually showcase what robert downey jr got to do because jonathan major was an amazing actor you know um i remember him and the harder they fall and you know when he killed lakeith stanfield fuck him i just want to say that right now nothing i just hate anything lakeith stanfield's been in and i just want to take this time to say this i hated you it's darius i hated you and um get out i hated you for selling out fred hampton and i know you did it i know you didn't do it I know Bill Cart Cartwright did it, but I know you did it, nigga, because you played it too well. And you didn't let uh Black Power Ranger count to three. Um, the girl who played JT, boyfriend and rap shit, which y'all should have let go for another season because them hoes um definitely played old girl who was a manager. But the dude who played that, the quick draw who wouldn't shut the fuck up, you let him count to one and you shot him in the cheek on some whole shit. Now he was stupid but I couldn't stand your bitch ass in that. And I can't stand you in shit else. And they keep letting you get roles. And then you play Jesus, I heard, or something. And I ain't even gonna watch that because I know I'm not gonna be able to stand you in it there looking all dirty and musty. And I just know that the, the theater gonna stank because of setting you in. And I just don't even want to put myself through it. Fuck you. All right, Lakeith, you personally have not done anything to me personally. The roles you play, you play them too fucking well. Just like everybody can't stand the nigga who played in uh, Diary of a Bla Mad Black Woman. I can't stand Joe Mother... Lakeith, I don't know you. Your characters, I can't stand they motherfucking ass. And the fact that your character seems to just be you in roles the same way Denzel is just playing Denzel with a different name. Fuck y'all, all right? Fuck y'all. Fuck Darius, all right? Fuck Paperboy too, all right? Lying ass motherfucker. Didn't even know. But anyways, all I'm saying is you got to make sure that we get that same opportunity or we got to make sure that we maximize and um do what's necessary to kind of not put ourselves in situations to where we are having to plead to the academy or the white folks or whatever it is it's just because we can see it's nothing new i mean john ja Morant was out there toting a the gun and josh giddy out there dancing with underage girls i'm not sitting there saying one is better than the other i'm just saying look at the look at the um the broadcast for it i mean anybody watch the lsu fight look how basically the coach for LSU wanted to call them girls thugs. I get what she doing, but if that was Don Staley, Don, Don uh, Staley, uh, however you say her last name, I apologize for getting it wrong, for the South Carolina game Gamecocks doing that same attitude as the LSU coach was. And I get why she was upset, but after the game, you see she could have cooled down and apologized. Then they would have been calling the coach for South Carolina Gamecocks. I see why they act so ghetto in this. So you see what's afforded as class and everything else and you see who's really given um the opportunity to make a second chance and i just hope that um he's given that opportunity to make a second chance yes sir and that's just a bar right there i mean like i said jonathan majors on uh 
high trajectory to hit the stratosphere and then he lost Kang and he lost everything else. I mean, fuck it. They cheated Angela because, I mean, she was a queen of the most powerful nation in the world and she lost her whole fucking family and the fucking Oscars. And I'm not going to get over that. But we'll wrap it right here, guys. I appreciate everybody, like I said, that reached out. I appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to us. I hope everybody's been well. I'm glad to be back. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're going to take it one day at a time. And just try to, you know, ingratiate myself back into this whole fold and stuff like that. And I miss y'all, man. So this has been another episode of 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison. Peace. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 morning 92 podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always hey, keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.